Well, we work on tons of projects. In fact, uh, we just did the NDAA uh, in the house. It'll it'll pass out of the house. Well, we're starting on it now. All of our submissions went in uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then we're going to finalize it over the next couple of months. The NDAA, or National Defense Authorization Act, will pass out of the house this summer. But we do a lot of work in the NDAA, uh, especially looking at what's needed for our local bases and industry supporting those bases is really important. Also, you should note that I have um, acquired over 500 million in authorizations or appropriations for the district, over 500 million. So if there is a local entity, a county, um, government organization, agency, et cetera, when they find a grant, for example, our office, like I'll turn around grant letters within 24 hours, usually our, we usually do. And so um, we really pride ourselves on, you know, being able to provide resources and get results for the low country. Um, and it's it's rare when you see a, a team turn around those kinds of letters that quickly. And so uh, that's one of them. One of the very first projects that I also got done as a member of Congress is very local. It was Crab Bank in Mount Pleasant. For 11 years, different stakeholders were trying to get a solution that everybody could agree on, whether you were wildlife, uh, ecosystem, environment, local community, neighborhood, et cetera. We had these different stakeholders, and for 11 years, they were trying to figure out with the Army Corps of Engineers how they were going to re nourish Crab Bank. Well, in 11 weeks, we got together, our office, we talked to each of the different stakeholders separately. We then had a series of meetings together with the different stakeholders and helped come up with a solution that the town could agree on, the Army Corps of Engineers could agree on, that the environmental groups, the, the wildlife groups, that everybody could agree on. And it took us 11 weeks, and that project was started and finished within a year of that, I believe. So um, again, just another example. Um, we've held folks accountable, for example, when, uh, you know, everyone was looking for the F-35, uh, Monkey Island is another one where, um, we discovered that there were monkeys on Morgan Island off the coast of Beaufort for the longest time. Locals were told that those monkeys were, that it was basically a monkey sanctuary and monkeys that were lab tested came there and retired essentially. But that's not what was going on. We discovered via white coat waste and via some letters to NIH and Dr. Fauci, that over five or six hundred rhesus monkeys a year were taken from this island for specifically for animal testing and um, animal rights is an issue that i've been working a lot on we're still holding nih's feet to the fire and still um you know hot on the issue trying to make sure that we continue to get answers and that we eventually get rid of monkey island that it becomes a, a, a different place either a sanctuary for animals a true sanctuary we want to make sure that that uh, animals aren't unnecessarily tested on by the government or anyone else. So um, that's something that we have worked on as well extensively. Um, we do a lot of water resources, whether it's stormwater, flooding projects, military housing funding, those kinds of things. I mean, I just have example after example of uh, things that we've done for the Low Country. Daniel Island, most recently, um, Boyd Gregg uh, called us on a Friday afternoon. There was a permitting issue with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to get the permits done correctly so they could start the bridge project, Bear Beresford Creek Bridge. He called me early on a Friday afternoon by 5 p.m. by close of business that day. We had a solution. We got the permitting expedited with the Army Corps of Engineers, and they were able to check that box and get started on that project. It'll still be several more months before the, the bridge is done, but that's something we did in one afternoon. Um, another example would be the dredging project up in Berkeley County. Um, Johnny Cribb called me. Again, I don't know what it is with people calling on a Friday afternoon. Called me on a Friday afternoon. They were having an issue again with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and they were going to lose $20,000 a day starting the following Monday, starting that was a Friday. Starting Monday, they were going to lose $20,000 a day if they didn't get the permit to go through. What had happened was uh, a rule had been interpreted or a rule had been changed that it wasn't just the local Army Corps of Engineers organization that had to approve the permitting. It had to go regional, which meant to Atlanta. Brand new rule. It wasn't there when they started it. And they, weren't, they were not informed that it had to go that way until the very last minute. So the county was going to lose 
a ton of money. Think about that, how much that would be. That's $100,000 a week. So in one month, if the permit wasn't done, and we all know that those things take months, that's $100,000 a month to Berkeley County had that not gone through. So he calls me on a Friday afternoon. We get a hold of the Army Corps of Engineers Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. By Monday, we had the paperwork signed, the permitting passed, approved, done. The county didn't lose any money. So, um, you know, when you call us, we uh, will help. I mean, we try to call everybody back in, in 24 to 48 hours. But when you call us and you say, hey, I have a need, I'm going to be there for you. And so, uh, you know, I encourage folks to continue reaching out. I'm really proud of the work that we're doing. But I just have example after example after example um, and, and super proud of the work that we're, we're doing. Mm -hmm.